Hello and a very warm welcome and a very good morning to everybody that's tuning in to News 9 Live. I'm Kabir Nakvi. Joining me here in the studio is my colleague Vargis P. Abraham. And what we're essentially up to it every day at 8 a.m. in the morning is to bring you the top headlines. But along with that, what are headlines across newspapers telling us? What are some of the headlines on e-copies telling us? What are some tabloid headlines? Hindi, English and newspapers from down south. Information focused from, uh, you know, uh, Tamil Nadu, Kerala, uh, Andhra Pradesh and Telangana as well, which also is pole bound this year, Varghese, let's not forget. Um, the top news that we're looking at right now, it seems, is after four months, Rahul Gandhi returns as MP a day ahead of the no trust debate. But that's not all that we're going to uh, speak about. Ethnic cleansing by state questions uh, the Punjab and Haryana High Court after it halts the new demolitions. That's something that we're going to throw some light on. Also here on the front page is that conversation vis-a-vis uh, -vis the Delhi Services Bill. Even as it was passed in the Rajya Sabha, 131 to 102, when the number game in terms of votes is... Uh, you know something that one is looking at it's important to note what the ex chief justice of india gogoi had to say about the, the doctrine the, the mm -hmm. basic structure doctrine of the constitution and how the congress has now reacted to that uh, we'll play out that reaction and uh, we'll get you uh, you know uh, perspectives from both the sides uh, along with that uh, one important news that you know i think indian express has covered right on its front page is that of uh, the 1989 uh, kashmiri pandit uh, murder case you know jnk police reopens 1989 justice ganju uh, murder case to unearth the plot so a fresh probe on that front as well. It's the fifth day of the Gyanwapi survey. You've been speaking to the right kind of people. It's going to be interesting to know uh, what you've learned over the last couple of days when, uh, you know, Gyanwapi survey is to be looked at. Um, hate crime section has been imposed against that RPF Jawan ah, who, who opened fire, opened fire. Well, four killed people four killed. people in totality on that, uh, you know, train um, for about 40 minutes. Those copses was just lying inside those coaches, bogies. I mean, in front of the public, um, quite gory visuals, uh, you know, that came. Interestingly, in some political news, Ahmadi Party might just tie hands with the Congress Party in, in Gujarat. Gujarat. I mean, times change and you the know, tables so turn and the tides just those, uh, take you, you in know, a different uh, parties, direction. Some of those parties, uh, in fact, made their... Uh, stay opposing the Congress. Opposing the and Congress. Now they are Taking hands. each other's pla pla place. place. I remember, you know, catching on to so many debates, but the prime agenda was, has the Ahmadi party taken up Congress's space? And that will the Congress give up Ahmadi party? party? Yeah, I mean, these are debates space. and speculation. That we, and then suddenly Precisely. we see that both of them are Also, uh, Tamil Nadu Minister Senthil Balaji, just ah. a couple of months back, he was, you remember him crying, hmm. him being dragged and we the all know ED how important that, yeah. Senthil Balaji is for the DMK government, if not uh, for uh, MK Stalin alone. So, um, ED custody mm -hmm. uh, for, uh, you know, uh, Senthil Balaji. Balaji, he was um, taken out of prison, I think, last night. Uh, he was actually he was under uh, observation. I mean, not observation. He was had undergone a um, uh, heart a surgery, yeah, a sur surgery, and after which he was under observation and and mm. was recuperating in the hospital. I think they would have got the go ahead that now he can be taken into All right. custody. All right, uh, but first and foremost, let's quickly shift our focus to Rahul Gandhi. Here in the Times of India, the front page says after four months, Rahul returns as member of parliament a day ahead of no trust debate, set to be India blocks his opening speaker today. So all eyes on the parliament today. I'm 100% sure, Varghese. Um, it also says BGP's uh, Katheria gets relief on a two years jail order, which is also an interesting case, uh, which uh, we will speak about in a little while. It says four months after he was disqualified, Rahul Gandhi returned to the parliament to a hero's welcome. And we all saw those visuals, you know, the cacophony and the amount of people who were there from politicians, you know, lining up on the verandas to see, you know, Rahul Gandhi wapas a gaye bhai. And uh, the media uh, personnel as well from photographs. I mean, it was straight out of an Oscar, uh, you know, red carpet. Uh, for the man, I mean, that's actually, you know, the vibe that came out uh, was exactly that. Uh, it was a hero's welcome for, from his party men with his membership of the lower house restored uh, following the Supreme Court staying his conviction in a defamation case. The former Congress chief is now set to be the India bloc's opening speaker during the debate on the no confidence motion scheduled to begin today, followed by party colleagues Gaurav Gogoi and Manish Tiwari announcing the reinstatement of Rahul as an MP. Lok Sabha notification said, in view of the SE order on Friday, the disqualification has ceased to operate, subject to further judicial pronouncements. Now, it was important to note how quickly he will be reinstated because um, with the swiftness that he was removed 
from the parliament he has been reinstated with that kind of fitness i mean more I mean, we were asking that question whether you know that swiftness will be same when it came to suspension or and i think the bjp has been wise enough to ensure that they did not delay it fast because they didn't want to give that martyr tag when it comes to rahul gandhi who has also been playing on that aspect as well see he's been reinstated after almost 134 days so right. 134 days he's been out of uh, action when it comes to the parliament and uh, remember he actually knew how to use it as well uh, there was a huge rally in wayanad the first thing is that he went to wayanad he visited wayanad there was huge rally that was taken off and then you had mm. surprisingly you had the allies and yet to become allies at that time before this uh, INDI block was formed all of them actually supporting him and now interestingly enough we were talking about AAP and Congress and you had AAP leaders coming out in support of Rahul Gandhi uh, over his uh, suspension as well so in interestingly enough the suspension did work to catalyze the opposition to a large extent and Rahul Gandhi has effectively used that also when it comes to uh, optics and uh, politicking as well so now the big question as you rightly pointed out uh, what is going to be the debate uh, that he's going to start when it comes to the no confidence motion that has been moved the and he is going to open up the bjp is trying to play it down yes the bjp has been you know bjp has been trying to play it down with two uh, aspects of it one is that they said that they wanted to bring the debate about the death of the minor the rape uh, and murder of a minor in rajasthan remember the coal right. uh, in the coal furnace the brick so, kill yeah, so the, they were the talking brick kill yes yes so that murder case they wanted in fact discuss in mm. parliament but at the BGP same time leaders also made it a point to visit that particular brick they made, kill they they they, 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 visited, they, they, they the visited the place members. they visited the family members so the bjp wants to discuss this now right. the issue over here that mm. has been raised kesi vinu gopal also raised is saying that manipur has burning for almost Three months. Why aren't we having a single debate on it? And the BJP is saying that we are we are ready to But have a debate. But the BJP also saying that Rahul is not acquitted in this case. Let's not forget. This see, is only a stay BG, on the thing. There is see, interestingly enough, uh, and that BG history of Surya. history, you know, a, a, a repeat offender tag that the BJP has given to Rahul Gandhi. Uh, they're basically essentially sticking. on to that yesterday uh, that uh, on this uh, debate hmm. i mean on this issue as well i was in fact asking one of our guests uh, mm, you know uh, there were some uh, learned uh, uh, political analysts who were there you know there was a time when such things never became court cases i mean th there was politicians used to take jab at each other they used to in fact make a lot of statements but none of it was dragged to the court where the court had to say that you know it might be a crass statement it might be this i mean the court was sitting hmm. and the irony about this entire case is that people who are third party to the case are the ones who are filing the case uh, there was one case that is coming up in bombay high court especially on uh, calling um, uh, a name with regard to the prime minister that is also coming up for hearing and, and uh, it is being said that uh, it's been extended his relief has been extended in that case so that case is also still going and the bjp has been trying to uh, push those uh, repeat offender attacks but the fact remains that name calling and even crass statements have been put forward by most of the politicians but never landed in court as defamation and that when third party uh, people who are not been technically affected by those statements are the ones who are actually taking up that statements in court that is something that we need to be had to have some kind of a concern about uh, because then it looks like in indian politics so there is no space for uh, anyone to make any kind of statement as such but these jibes were in fact there i mean hmm. the 1980s and 90s as well as early 2000s these you know people have also been on. saying people have also been talking about that image makeover of rahul gandhi from uh, you know pappu to the kind of reception that he got uh, yesterday Um, in the parliament, uh, people are putting out editorials. There are comparisons of what he was like ten years back and what he is like today. Uh, but the, these 130 days that you're talking about, 134 the, 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 odd these days, four yeah. months that he mm. was, he ceased to exist as a member of parliament. How do you think he used his time like? Um, there see, are several videos that have now come out. He's visiting Azad Parliament. You, see, uh, you know, as a politician, going to one thing you should understand is that when you make an adversity into an opportunity. Hmm. Uh, it is going to be an opportunity but the bjp is wise enough that he was using that adversity into an opportunity and they said it's high time they in fact cut short on that uh, victim tag that he had been playing on so Polit politically the bjp was wise enough to ensure that his reinstatement also was carried out not giving a room for debate on that matter at all because again that would have been said that the court has stayed and yet you know things have not moved forward but during that 134 uh, days uh, kabir i think you, you have also been following videos that have been coming on social media about how he interacted with a section of people who are these section of people we are looking at uh, them interacting with rural women with uh, laborers at the mandi we are looking at mechanics you know these are uh, 
a base of the Congress. Rather, the Congress has hmm. he's used hmm. that that time probably, and probably he's been using a lot of his time to reconnect. Especially when Barajodo from Barajodo, it's been a kind of uh, you know. They're uh, saying another leg of Barajodo is also. It's kind of a on the cards. parallel, parallel. Yeah, that could uh, on from the cards. From an east to west, like he's, a, a there's dissecting a possibility the country that, yes, now from exactly. uh, you know you had one from uh, you know from Tamil Nadu all the way to Kashmir, and then from. Uh, east to west is also uh, something that they have been looking at. Hmm. And remember, Manipur, he's the first politicians to go to Manipur. That is what the Congress has claimed. Right. Adhiranjan Chaudhary said. And in Manipur, he had gone much ahead of, uh, you know, a lot of uh, other uh, teams had visited the place. So he had gone there and assessed the ground situation uh, at the same time. Uh, though the centre has been actively there, the Home right. Minister so had been I'm there. I'm just going to ask you this. Uh, uh, all throughout the monsoon session of the parliament, what are you expecting is going See, to be See, I would today? say the monsoon session of the parliament. If uh, how do you think the BJP is going to counter the? Uh, see, it has come at a time. See, politically, if you look at how it has worked out, if you look at the monsoon session of the parliament, mm. if it was a normal session, both of us would have been uh, discussing about the data protection bill and the you know right, the provisions you're right, you're in right. it that. Anyway, the data protection bill was passed by voice vote yesterday. And then yeah, uh, and, and nobody's the Delhi services well. bill. We would have been talking about this and probably what Manipur would have been. But the entire monsoon session has been stormed by a side story and that has become the main story. That is the return of Rahul Gandhi to the parliament. And now everything is going to revolve around from Rahul Gandhi's narrative saying that Rahul Gandhi, will he take up uh, on Manipur? Uh, in when terms they of with in no terms confidence of motion, again we are talking about In him terms of the story of optics, in terms mm. of perspectives, I mean, Indians love a good comeback story now, don't we? Yes, I see, that is the thing about it. You know, this country, we should understand is that it, um, if especially look at the electorate. The electorate is very smart, but at the same time, very sentimental and emotional as well. Uh, this is the same country that punished Indira Gandhi, who gave, mm. uh, you know, the 1917 victory was her riding hide and who also gave the emergency. They punished her. And there was a time when uh, people said that it is highly impossible that you can unseat uh, Indira Gandhi. They punished her, but they also brought her back. All right. They also brought her back. So uh, this is uh, that uh, country. So you cannot take the Indian people for granted. They uh, have an emotional bond. They have certain things and uh, already set in their minds. We can talk about polarization, polarization. How much of polarization will go to an extent is something that we need to also understand. But then over here, the entire narrative has been now from the monsoon session narratives have moved away from all these uh, important things. Even the Delhi Services Bill. Yesterday, there was brilliant arguments that were made by Home Minister Amit Shah. And there were also counter arguments that was made. In Rahul Gandhi. We should have been discussing that. But then the issue is again, it's from Rahul Gandhi's all perspective right, we are discussing. All, all right, sir. Let, let's talk about the Delhi Services Bill. Oh, you're going to the Delhi Services Bill. Rahul Gandhi ki Lok Sabha Sadhya Bahal. Um, bear Hal, on the other hand, uh, the Delhi Services Bill, that was something that the Rajya Sabha cleared and passed after eight hours of, uh, you know, debate, debate. Uh, that happened. Um, the Delhi Services Bill, Arvind Kejriwal seems to be really miffed with the centre uh, over that point. If you, if you would have heard what Arvind Kejriwal said after the, you know, bill was cleared, um, he said that, you know, this is arrogant coming from uh, the Home Minister. He, and he also he said, said that, that, you know, uh, you're backdooring. For 25 years, the, the people of Delhi have, uh, you know, BGP has been in exile for the last 25 years in Delhi. Over the last four elections, we have beaten uh, the Bharati Janata Party. This is their way of getting into the politics. They're using a back channel. In 2014, Prime Minister, you promised the people of Delhi when ahead of the elections that if you come to power, you will give, you will grant full statehood to uh, Delhi. That hasn't happened. It's your promise. This is something that Arvind Kejriwal said yesterday. Went on you know what? Uh, <laughs> before we before we talk about it, let's quickly play out uh, the reaction of Arvind Kejriwal after the bill was cleared. Okay. 102 votes in favor uh, uh, against the bill. 131 in favor of the bill. And then we'll talk about how KC Venugopal and what uh, former Chief Justice of India uh, Gogoi had to say on All the right, basic we'll structure doctrine of the Constitution. Arvind Kejriwal's bite. If he can play that real quick. जिस देश के प्रधानमंत्री उस देश की सर्वोच्च अदालत को नहीं मानते उस देश का क्या भविष्य हो सकता है सीधे सीधे वो कह रहे हैं सुप्रीम कोर्ट जो मर्जी आदेश पास करे अगर मुझे सुप्रीम कोर्ट का आदेश पसंद नहीं आया तो मैं उसके खिलाफ कानून बना के सुप्रीम कोर्ट के आदेश को पलट दूंगा इतना अहंकार हो गया इन लोगों को इन लोगों ने देखा कि दिल्ली में आम आदमी पार्टी को हराना बहुत मुश्किल है पिछले चार चुनाव सीधे सीधे 2013 में 2015 में 2020 में और उसके बाद एमसीडी का चुनाव सीधे सीधे चार चुनाव बीजेपी आम आदमी पार्टी से दिल्ली में हार गई दिल्ली के अंदर 
पच्चीस साल से ज्यादा हो गए अब बीजेपी की सरकार नहीं बनी है पच्चीस साल से इनको वनवास दिल्ली के लोगों ने दिया हुआ है तो इनको लगा कि आम आदमी पार्टी को हराना मुश्किल है तो इन्होंने चोर दरवाजे से पीछे से चोर दरवाजे से इन्होंने दिल्ली की सत्ता को हथियाने की कोशिश की है दिल्ली के लोगों ने एक बार आम आदमी पार्टी को सत्तर में से सड़सठ सीट दी और तीन सीट बीजेपी को दी दूसरी बार सत्तर में से बासठ सीट दी और आठ सीट बीजेपी को दी तो एक तरह से दिल्ली की जनता ने चिल्ला चिल्ला के बीजेपी को कहा है कि दिल्ली के अंदर दखल मत करना प्रधानमंत्री जी को साफ साफ शब्दों में दिल्ली के लोगों ने कहा सातों सीट उनको नेशनल चुनाव में सातों सीट दी और दिल्ली के चुनाव में तीन सीट दी तो मोदी जी को साफ साफ दिल्ली की जनता ने कहा कि दिल्ली के काम में दखल मत करना आप देश संभालो लेकिन मोदी जी कहते हैं मैं जनता की बात नहीं मानता इतना अहंकार हो गया ना जनता को सुन की बात मानते ना सुप्रीम कोर्ट की बात मानते You see how Arun Kejriwal plays with his words. He says, "But Modi ji says that I don't believe the people. But Modi ji's anger and the Delhi people will not give you one vote. This is his challenge that he set uh, given to uh, the Bharatiya Janata Party, the NDA government, because it's a clear NDA victory now, isn't it? Now, when it comes to the Delhi Services Bill, there were lots of arguments that were, uh, you know, taking place. Even as Arvind Kejriwal is miffed because, well, of course, the control over Delhi has gone, and uh, he's given quite a decent clarification to everybody of what this bill actually entails. He's saying that cabinet will be made, but the governor and uh, the central government will be able to make the government. Uh, so, what is the government? So, that's, that's been, that's what he has, has been his argument his from argument day one. Is one. Well, but the fact remains is that uh, there is one, well, there was one draconian provision that saying that they cannot legislate on uh, the bureaucracy, mm. and now the issue that is going to happen is that you know the Delhi uh, government and its cabinet can think, implement, and all that uh, whatever it wants to do as a policy. But at the end of the day, it depends on the governor whether it, has, it can be implemented or not, whether the officers can be changed or not. So the uh, the idea of direct implementation of their policies is going to get affected uh, uh, in a very big way, and. Uh, as you were saying, one of the statements that he has in fact moved out was that move shows BJP hates Delhi people. That is what Kejriwal is now playing with it. You know, after 75 years of independence, the Prime Minister has curtailed the freedom of the people of Delhi, mm. almost as if their votes do not matter. Now he's playing politics also. Right, right. right. He said really the well British has brought the Government of India Act back in the day. Yeah. You are bringing something like that, a draconian so, measure, 75 years you know, after no, independence. No, he, he interestingly compared the legislation of the centre with a, a colonial a mindset saying that you are treating Delhi like a colonial backyard. Uh, that is what he tried to say because I think he, from his argument stems from the... It's actually a good analogy. I mm. mean, because um, it isn't Delhi like, I mean, the colonial backyard. You have all the prime buildings, you've got the parliament, you've got Lutheran's Delhi. No, but when you're talking I mean, about saying, how, I mean, you're talking about he, uh, the way he's put it across, he's saying that after 75 years of independence, the prime minister has curtailed the freedom mm. of the people of mm. Delhi. He used to say that, like, the prime minister is not part of India and then, you know, he's decided one day to Center take over the whole of, of the Delhi country. via LG as parliament stamps its approval to bill. Government of NCT of Delhi amendment bill clears Rajya Sabha. Uh, so but no, now you, you know this effectively makes it a very diminished union territory. Delhi hmm. technically, effectively is a diminished union territory. It says Black Day bid to snatch governance through Chor Darwaza. I mean that is all. I mean, they are the huge hidden door. Word. The hidden door. Yeah. The hidden door. The Chor Darwaza. But uh, interestingly, Vargis, uh, <laughs> something that uh, has to be noted is that there is a Supreme Court hearing, a ruling that is still pending. Um, uh, the the Supreme Court which last month formed a constitution bench to examine the power of parliament over governance in Delhi is yet to pronounce its judgment. So, do you think okay. that's going to be the right kind of spin? See, I uh, think that right Arun now, Kejival Arun might, be Kejival would, might be looking at all legal options that is available mm. for him, whether he can re uh, ask whether this law that has been passed cannot be struck down by the SE. Uh, that also would be looking at uh, one of the aspects that he would be looking at. Hmm. And hmm. I think, as he pointed out, uh, Delhi should be, be given full statehood because it is the national capital. The centre has a role to be. The centre is placed from Delhi. You know, these are questions that are going to be. And there were a lot of compromise formulas also, Kabir. They were saying that New Delhi area should be completely under the centre. The rest of it should be under the state government. All that, you know, kind of uh, negotiation formulas and a lot of 
experts were giving their opinions on it. But right now, it looks like, um, well, Arvind Kejriwal uh, has to contend with the fact that the parliament has passed that bill and that uh, the wings of uh, the Delhi government has been clipped. Whether we uh, like, no other better word to say, but it, has to be, it actually has been clipped. And for Arvind Kejriwal, it's going to be very difficult to, you know, uh, negotiate uh, some of those policies uh, which he wanted to hammer through. Uh, Take a look at this. Some of them. Uh, ahead of 2024, it's a Times of India special and they've done a nice uh, infographic on their flap. It says NDA's strike rate is better, but INDIA has deeper lineup. Right? Mm -hmm. You've got a better lineup over there. You know, compared I, to the I, business I, sports I, and I, I don't know. You know yeah, the, the Battle line for that 2024 Lok Sabha polls are being drawn. 25 years after its formation, the BJP led National Democratic Alliance has grown to include 38 parties. The opposition has also united as the 26th member India National Developmental Inclusive Alliance, INDIA. Atul Thakur analyzes their record in Assembly and Lok Sabha elections over the past five years. NDA ahead on Lok Sabha seats, INDIA in states. You know, NDA's, you, current Kabir, NDA's current constituents had 332 MPs to INDIA's 144 in the Lok Sabha polls. However, <laughs> NDA constituents had polled only 3 crore more votes than INDIA's 22.9 crore. Thus, NDA won a seat for every 7.8 lakh votes it polled, whereas INDIA needed 15.9 lakh votes per seat. In the state assemblies, INDA, NDA members polled 3.6 crore fewer votes than INDIA's 26.8 crore, yet finished with 1,704 MLAs to INDIA's 1,793 MLAs. They had a better con conversion rate, winning a seat for every 1.4 lakh votes they got. INDIA averaged 1.5 lakh votes for each seat that it won. That's it's actually a, a good, uh, if, if people have sub subscribed to the uh, Times of India, do of course go through it. You know, it but says BGP uh, is uh, NDA's lone engine, but INDIA has many money engines. engines. Okay, uh, you know, when I when you were reading that to me, uh, I mean, I like the way the statistics has been put in and also the headline that says, but there's a joke in Malayalam and uh, I'll put it in Malayalam and I explain to you. You know what the joke is? It's about Kalavastha Nerishira Kendram, Marapayim uh, Marapayadi Irikim, which means to say that the IMD has said that it might rain and it uh, might not also rain. <laughs> So, oh. you know, the, uh, this you is exactly like that. that. No, but I think, I think this will give us a better perspective as to what's happening where. Is a direct NDA, INDA fight even possible? And uh, it, it gives good statistics, but again, I think it falls on I that. It might uh, rain, it might not rain. Thunder. I don't want to steal Times of India's <laughs> All right, quickly focusing, uh, shifting our focus to what uh, the Chief Just, former Chief Justice of India, Gogoi, had to say. Let's listen into that bite and then we'll talk about what KC Venu Gopal and how the Congress Congress actually answer. reacted to all of that. Listen into what the former Chief Justice of India had to say. Does it violate the basic feature of the Constitution? <laughs> Sir, I have to say something about the basic feature. Please. There's a book by Mr. Andarajuna. Yes, yes. A for, the former Solicitor yes. General on the Keshavan and the Bharti case. Yes. Having read the book, my view is that the doctrine of basic structure of the Constitution has a debatable, a very debatable jurisprudential basis. I would not say anything more than this. I wouldn't say anything more. The doctrine of basic structure has a very debatable jurisprudential basis. Well, what's your opinion on that, uh, Varghese? And, uh, you know, before I take your opinion, I'm going to also, uh, you know, quickly read out what uh, the AICC General Secretary he has uh, reacted. Uh, he, how he Vinay reacted Gopal essentially reacted to, uh, to this. And he's put out a long, lengthy tweet, you know, which he uh, did uh, put out. And he said he was, I'm appalled at the fact that this is a, a former a chief former justice. Ju I, I mean, that's he what also I was coming said that, up you know, that What is debatable here is your tenure as a chief justice of India. So, mm -hmm. let, me, let me quickly read this out. Shocking that a former CJI... Uh, questions the jurisprudence of the basic structure of the constitution. Is this the BJP's trick to begin the full-fledged dismantling of the constitution of India? Does it think that democracy, equality, secularism, federalism, judicial independence are all debatable ideas? 
not surprising that those who have no regard for constitutional principles are now propping up a former CJI with a debatable track record to begin their attack on the constitutional through this very dangerous throwaway line. What is Mr. Gogoi's argument? Is he saying that there is nothing called the basic structure that should be protected? Does the government endorse this? He tags the current law minister, Arjun Ram Meghwal, and says uh, they must categorically oppose this line of thought or it will be clear that the BGP has now started a process to destroy the core tenets of our constitution. I mean, of course, th this is the verbiage, the language, it's too elitist, isn't it? I mean, not See, everybody will understand what KC Venu Gopal all, uh, area is trying to say. You, you, first of all, we should understand that when it... I mean, I was surprised when uh, Mr. Gogoi made that statement when he said hmm. that the basic structure hmm. of the constitution uh, is debatable. Now, in 1973, that Keshwananda Bharati... But he is citing a book, isn't it? See, he's citing a book. I, it is from the Solicitor, Solicitor General, right? And it's a, an opinion of a person. Yeah. Now, let me ask you, in 1973, there are several says, opinions of a person. So, else. if one person's opinion, do you think that is the right opinion? And he's a judge. He's a judge who... He, he has been a Supreme Court judge. He's been the CGI. He knows that when he goes ahead and talks about a topic, he has to listen to all sides of the argument you're telling me that you have you have opinionated yourself from an argument a that has been put forward happening. by uh, this the thing. discussion is happening in the parliament it's eight but hours the, but, but but the fact you remains that how can you say that the basic structure of the constitution can be debatable what aren't the core values of the constitution shouldn't it be maintained Shouldn't it be maintained? I mean, are, don't you think uh, there are people going to be from various schools of thought that are going to liberty, say Liberty, justice, that equality. That don't you want anyone of it? Debatable? Liberty, justice, equality. You don't want anyone of anything of it. Are they all debatable? Are your principles of secularism, is it debatable? Are your principles Depends. of, uh, uh, I mean, you know, making this in a democracy is de debatable? The, what is the nature of our constitution? Our nature of our constitution has been is to this a debate or is this an argument? No, I'm just trying to say that I'm really appalled by the way that argument has come on. When you say that you want to actually, it's debatable that the basic structure, the, do, uh, the doctrine of the constitution. What is the basic structure? Of con it is the personality of the constitution. You want to change the very personality of the constitution. How do you want to change it? And you say it. I won't say further. What do you mean by that? When you say that you won't go further on it. That is, and here we have uh, that fear. Uh, you know, one of the biggest uh, narratives that the Congress has been pushing is that there is an attempt to change the constitution. There is an attempt. How that attempt is being done or whether it is actually dismantling of it. Actually, I would like to see whether, you know, the law minister would respond to that because he's been tagged in that tweet. So, I would right. actually want to, want to see what could be the response on that. All right. We'll have to wait and watch as to what happens in the parliament today. Rahul Gandhi is the opening speaker for the INTIA block and also how Arjun Ram Meghwal now responds to that tagging where KC Vedum Gopal has put on that tweet responding to, uh, you know, the former Chief Justice and uh, Rajya Sabha MP Gogoi's questioning of the basic structure. Um, all right. Oh, 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 okay. Take a look at this, Varghese. Uh, Jammu and Kashmir police reopens 1989 Justice Ganju murder case to unearth plot. Now, 1989, I wasn't born. Um, the Kashmiri Pandit exodus, what's been happening in the valley, you know, that's something that News 9 and News 9 Plus have been covering uh, really well uh, over the last, uh, you know, three, four years now. Uh, bringing you updates about, you know, how the quality action team and the security and the economics, the latest G20. Uh, we've got the right kind of reportage uh, coming right out of Srinagar. So, I know what's happened post the 2000s. But what happened in 1989 is something that I am a little oblivious to. So, I will have to go through the facts. However, um, I can understand uh, the weightage of uh, this particular news because this is the justice that we are talking about. JNK police reopens 1989 Justice Ganju murder case to unearth the plot. To unearth the larger conspiracy behind the murder of retired judge Neil Kant Ganju that happened over 30 years ago, the State Investigative Agency of Jammu and Kashmir Police on Monday sought information from the general public to reinvestigate the case. As a Sessions and District Court judge, Ganju had in August 1968 sentenced to death JNK Liberation Front founder and leader Makbul Bhatt for the murder of police inspector Amar Chand in 1966. Upon retirement, Ganju, who was 67, was shot dead by militants um, on November 4th, 1989 in Srinagar. So that's what the case essentially is about and uh, the police is now, has now, uh, well you know it's their bid to open this um, uh, open the probe again to unearth the entire plot. Uh, the largest implications, because you know that it's a sensitive situation. See, as soon as you uh, bring in the words terrorist, militants, Kashmiri pundits, um, 
जस्टिस थर्टी इयर्स बैक आई मीन एंड यूर टॉक अबाउट द वैली um it cert- it certainly gets sensitive i mean you don't need somebody no, you uh, don't to need have somebody an ex- to, to be an expert on see, the jnk in 1989 you know we must understand that the kashmiri pandits were a terrorized lot i mean they are te- they were a terrorized lot there has been a lot of stories that even now has not come from what happened in 1989 and sure. there are a lot of families including that of armed forces because we you see jklf uh, malik uh, is accused in the murder of uh, or killing of a uh, Uh, air force officer as well so there are a lot of such stories that are there and but the for me the issue is that now hmm. after 33 years when you go back will you be able to do justice about it because when the period when it was supposed to have happened it's not happened and uh, the 1989 factor remains is that it is a very dark period in the history of kashmir it is also a very dark period for us in india as well hmm. because uh, hmm. you know at that time of course information was completely subdued from what was coming out from uh, uh, kashmir as such and in 1989 a whole lot of people became refugees in their own land okay and uh, i think it is high time they in fact uh, do some kind of uh, investigation into it but will it reach its objectives is the big question because of the time that has passed between all uh, such incidents justice ganju sentence a, on uh, makbul bhat in the year 1968 was upheld by the supreme court in the year 1982 and was uh, hanged in tihar jail in 1984 now in a communique uh, the sia appealed to all persons familiar with the facts of circumstances of the ganju murder case to come forward and share any account of events which has direct or indirect bearing on the investigation of the instant case the sia has also said that the identity of all such persons shall be kept hidden besides all useful and relevant information shall be suitably rewarded as well uh, so i mean the right kind of incentive for these uh, potential witnesses and people who have information about the justice ganju murder case to come out and help the police um, but you know the larger question and the bigger question like you rightly pointed out is that uh, 30 years later almost I mean, 33 years i think it almost is almost 33, 33 years later i mean people say justice delayed is justice denied exactly says, i mean this is 30 years uh, in the making um i mean that's too much of a time is it going to be any kind of justice at all that's actually a big question and uh, people should get down in the comment sections and uh and let us know but at I least mean, at least there is an effort to opening of a you know probe. at least there is an effort huh. to actually see through the dark dark period of 1989 all right uh shifting our focus here ladies and gentlemen um let's uh, talk about manipur as well because a lot happened in manipur a lot uh, is happening in manipur, manipur. uh in the national capital we were hoping that amit shah would meet the uh, you know the iitlf uh, uh, leaders, uh, leaders uh, the itlf leaders uh, but that didn't happen amit shah himself was in the parliament it seems you know there was a 8 hour long discussion debate over the delhi bill so that meeting it seems is going to happen today uh, there are some demands that they have uh, you know put forth even the kukki np of manipur the the umbrella body the apex body of all the kukki tribal groups of manipur have put out a very stern demand and we'll talk about that as well but first and foremost what the supreme court had to say in terms of the supreme court monitored probe into the sexual violence case of manipur i was actually manipur, uh, reading that aspect only uh, you know the of, Santa, <laughs> what the top court wants done um, it's quite clearly laid out here i'm oh, just okay. going to put i'm just going to put it out and uh, then we can talk about the intricacies it says what the top court wants to be done panel of 3 ex judges to look into the relief and rehabilitation this is ex jnk high court chief justice retired uh, geeta mittal who's going to be the head of this particular three member committee ex bombay high court judge justice retired shalini p joshi an ex delhi high court judge justice retired asha menon now what the top court wants are a couple of things five officers to be brought into cbi from different states to oversee the probe ex maharashtra police chief dattatreya padsalgikar uh, to monitor overall cbi probe into sexual violence 42 state sits each comprising inspector from another state to look into cases not transferred to the cbi SIT is to be supervised by six DIG rank officers that are not going to be from Manipur. This is a CGI led bench that moves to restore trust in law as the Attorney General says situation in Manipur right now 
is very tense. Allowing shifting of 11 abuse cases to the CBI is a big uh, effort on the part of the Supreme Court. SE allows transfer of 11 cases of she sexual violence to the CBI. So that is a huge thing. And what the, the reason what they have said is that uh, the reason behind this move is this, that they want to in fact say the directions are aimed at restoring faith and rule of law, building of confidence in the strife tone state. Uh, Kabir, so the fact remains is that, uh, you know, there's this mm -hmm. huge trust deficit when it comes to these law missionaries and that is what is in fact leading to it. And uh, I think uh, the Supreme Court is trying to restore that trust in the process of law in Manipur because of the nature in which it has you know, turned out to be. And um, of course, there are, uh, you're talking about three female judges panel that is in fact hmm. going ahead to, uh, that shows some kind of sensitivity to the matter as well, that it is the all-female uh, judge panel that is looking into it, uh, which is in fact very good in a large perspective. What we're showcasing right now is that KPA has withdrawn the support from the N. Biren Singh government. This uh, was uh, but, yesterday. But, but then again, the cookie in P. Manipur has put out, uh, you know, the apex body of the Koki tribes has put out uh, a question to the Parliament of India. And this question, I'll just read out this question. It says, uh, the Kuki in P. Manipur is utterly dismayed uh, by the incessant terming of cookies as foreigners or otherwise illegal immigrants. Some people are also calling them terrorists by the state government. Consequently, the ruthless attacks of Metis against the cookies in connivance with the state governments who have in engineered anti-constitutional organizations as the Arambai Tengol, Meti Lipun and others under the watch of incumbent Chief Minister N. Biren Singh and the member of parliament Rajya Sabha M. Um, uh, taking a name is a testament of the state government's animosity against the cookies. The cookie in P. Manipur would like to f therefore implore the central government to put an end to this contention and clearly spell out whether they think the cookies as foreigners in line with the vitriolic narratives of the Metis as or as true citizens of India, the central government must answer now, pronounce us as foreigners or otherwise protect us as true citizens of the country and save us from the raging attacks of the Metis against our people and our land. This is what the Koki in P. Manipur has said and the, uh, you know, the indigenous tribal leaders is, uh, forum, the ITLF leaders that are in the national capital, even as uh, Mizoram Chief Minister Zoram Thanga sort of like convinced them to have this meet in Delhi. Yesterday they were supposed to come to Delhi in the evening. Um, this is on the Manipur front, a five-member delegation of the Indigenous Tribal Leaders' this Forum is going to meet the Union Home Minister Amit Shah today and raise their five key demands, including a separate political administration and a mass burial in Churachandpur district of the Kukizo community members killed in the ethnic violence since the 3rd of May. We have five main demands. Our political demand of total separation from Manipur should be sped up. As the burial of the bodies of the Kukizo community members has been delayed, the bodies are now lying in Imphal and all the bodies should be brought to Churachandpur, ITLF Secretary Muan Tombing told the PTI. But there is an issue uh, over there. Now, no? on other demands, because Tombing said... Then, oh, there, before you talk about the bodies, there is hmm. another thing. Unclaimed bodies are that of infiltrators is what has been uh, presented before court. Before the court. Uh, so, right. And then now we have uh, them saying that it all belongs uh, to and the... And the Kuki NP uh, Manipur is saying that either come out and clearly spell us Whether we are as foreigners. foreigners. See, it makes sense because one of the vitriolic narratives against the cookie has been, as he rightly pointed out, is that they are all immigrants. And how, how do you distinguish between the, the immigrants who are staying over here and those who are not staying uh, in, uh, you know, who are proper Indian citizens or not? And when the violence had started, they had in fact ensured that, uh, you know, this narrative kept going that, you know, it is infiltrators from Myanmar who is actually stemming this. There is narco-terrorism on one side. So that debate has been always going on them and it looks like like that the cookie MP wants a clarity on this, whether they are Indian citizens or not. But again, uh, Kabir, one of the issues that uh, you have in fact raised over here is also about the separate demand. So it's moved separate out of separate administration. administration. Uh, they have been talking about it, but I think right. it is move, it's a movement towards a separate state being carved out of money. But, but how you know practical that will be is of course going to be a very diff a different issue altogether. I, 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 on the separate administration, separate state front, you know, I really don't want to jump the gun, Varghis, to be very honest and personal. It, it just hates me, uh, you know, I, I hate the fact that there's going to be another boundary line, a potential boundary line within, even within a state, it, it's a sad thing. Outside of a state becomes an even sadder situation. I don't want that to happen, but if that's the demand, if that's what, what's going to quell the violence on the ground re and become the road towards reconciliation, well... You think so be it? Um, 
I don't even want to say it. You don't want to say it, okay. But uh, the steps taken by the Supreme Court, I'm personally in favor. These are very welcome steps, at least. No, the because Supreme the, Court the has aspect has been, the Kabir Bund is to restore. The probe you know, it is the uh, uh, aspect and of the it has been judges. to restore. The aspect of it is to restore trust. Hmm. I mean, that is the, and it's a good move that they have an all women panel uh, group of judges who are, uh, or retired judges who are in fact uh, looking into it. All right, Varghese, uh, let's shift our focus. Let's also talk about uh, new, you know, another really sensitive and tenuous, uh, you know, position in the state of Haryana. Uh, and the High Court yesterday came in and stopped, uh, you know, those bulldozers. Demo demolitions. The By then the already, the seven in the last three, four days already, I was giving 70, the studies. No, 70 structures, structures had been raised structures. already, 60 including the hotel. Uh -huh. um, but the High Court, and this is important, it says ethnic cleansing by the state, it questions, is this ethnic cleansing by the I, high, I was reading the that state? statement, uh, the issue also arises whether Law the and order problem being used as a ruse, this coming in uh, from the High Court. High and court. these are big statements yeah, coming by the I, High I'll court. just read that statement, the issue also arises whether the buildings belonging to a particular community are being brought down under the guise of law and order problem and an exercise of ethnic cleansing is being conducted by the state. The bench added in its order. It's added this particular statement in its order. No, this is the first hmm. time I think hmm. I, the court has in fact used that so term also, ethnic out, cleansing. When people called out that this is a, you know, a, 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 a densely Muslim populated area and this kind of destruction is taking place in that densely Muslim populated area, um, is this targeted, uh, you know, against the minority? And uh, several officials came out and said that, you know, this is actually, in fact, not uh, targeted, uh, but uh, you know, they had a illegal, constructions. illegal constructions exactly. They Under said the that it's an illegal, illegal construction. They said it's the, an illegal the structure. The law and order rules that uh, the High Court has also called out. Uh, you know, I personally uh, look at it as a very welcome step. Uh, because you do in fact need High Court to come in. Because I was asking, speaking to a several lawyers and it's important to ask that question. One accused in a, you know, a family of seven and now the rest of the six members, including children and ladies, uh, are on the street because their the homes street have and been don't, destroyed. Are, don't have a shelter above their head over the, uh, for, for the night. And the government, what kind of camps have you put up? What kind of support are you giving them? Nobody's talking about that. The legal, uh, you know, the fraternity said that there are no remedies in, in these kind of cases as well. No, you because the action, exactly the problem is, uh, the action would have taken place. The objective of demolition would have been achieved. And then when you go for the legal remedy also, uh, you will probably looking at a post scenario where uh, it would be said that there could be maximum would be some kind of a stringent, hmm. uh, you know, kind of a dressing down given to the authorities. That's it. But the fact remains is that the action has taken replaced in the intermining period. So that is uh, a cause of concern and that is why the legal remedy part of it is going to be long uh, run. For your perusal and uh, for all the viewers that are with us uh, interested with the news that we are doing right now, prohibitory orders have been lifted in Gurgaon after a week. So Gurgaon prohibitory orders are lifted but there is curfew that is on in Nu particularly. Bus services to resume in Nu from today onwards. Banks will open up again for five hours. Uh, visitors at Galeria Market after section 144 was revoked on Monday. Several pictures that are coming out of Gurugram. But take a look at this and it's important and interesting as well. Arson attack again. Common place of worship was set on fire. Three people have been arrested. A syncretic place of worship that uh, locals call Peer Baba Mandir was set on fire in the early hours of Sunday. Now as that arson is attacks being reported that is a concern. Radically since the outbreak of communal now, see, violence. See, when we talk no. about syncretic areas, why would syncretic areas be targeted? What is the reason why syncretic areas are being targeted? Syncretic means both the communities are coming to This is exactly what I was talking about, Varghese. Homeless after new bulldozer run. Woman with a toddler and an 80-year-old with just nothing but rubble and one cot for the Where will they go? Where will they go? 150 concrete structures, hundreds of shanties raised in Nu within four days. It took four days for the high court to come in and stop that uh, particular bulldozing action. By uh, then, 750 structures have already come down. Many of them sh in the structures in the shanty areas of the city right. as well as the districts have come down. Uh, by then, I think a lot of people are also displaced by now. And I think that should, uh, since at least the, uh, the, you know, the court has been so uh, bold enough to go ahead and ask this question, ethnic cleansing, a huge word that has been used in its order, in fact. Hmm. All right. Um, uh, you've been speaking about Gyan Vapi for the longest time. Um, what do you think is coming out of Gyan Vapi? See, what's, what's as of now, it is in the second round of Gyan Vapi. See, what has happened is right now, it's in the second phase of investigation. So, they are using hmm. their radar technology and other to map. Now, the issue is that there are some 
I don't know whether it can be clarified because the ASI is yet to officially make that report and submit before court. But there are these so-called leaks that are happening and it's by the Hindu side. Lawyers are also coming out and saying they found a dome structure, they found some fragments of idols underneath, all that. And yesterday also, Kabir, when we were having a special show and we were discussing about it on Gyanwapi, the question that we were asking, what was the actual end side of this uh, particular, uh, you know, what is what is the achievement that they were looking when it comes to the issue about the survey? What is it that, are you looking for information about what it was underneath and then put it in the library? And interestingly enough, some of the guests have said, have, and they have said that the genie is already out of the bottle. If that report is going to come and if there is a structure that is going to be proved to be under that place, you cannot put it back in and it's going to be a long litigation that we are looking at with the communities trying to have ownership claims on that. And that will also put back, uh, you know, the kind of uh, focus it has been on the 1991 uh, uh, Places of Worship Act. So that is also going to be quite crucial at the moment. But today, fifth day, the survey is going to continue and we have to all wait for that survey to end and later uh, let us see whether this uh, would in fact uh, have some kind of consequence or bearing when it comes to the issue about whether they would be able to actually bring hmm. out something concrete out of this because this litigation has been going on from 1991 onwards and um, of course yesterday one of our guests are saying that uh, this would you know, if there is something going to come, it's going to open a Pandora's box because there's going to be claims on a lot of places other than this. All right, that, that's the roundup coming out of Gyan Vapi. Very quickly, let's also talk about uh, the RPF uh, Jawan who had opened fire on his senior, who had opened fire on those Muslim, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, members of the Muslim community on a running train and he was apprehended later on as well. That RPF Jawan, there's a hate crime section that has been imposed on uh, that RPF Jawan now. Yeah, it was a compassionate, a compassion recruitment. His father was part of the RPF. Yeah. That's why he was, uh, you know... Uh, taken into the force uh, recruited and uh, there seems to be some mental health issues uh, with the Jawan that has well, also been reported. which was and my biggest question why wouldn't you check up uh, I mean there are proper medical checkups these days you'd give a service revolver basically you should have had an evaluation revolver yeah, to somebody who is mentally you should uh, have had challenged. an evaluation and also Kabir there have been several complaints that were allegedly lodged against him by his superiors and his uh, colleagues as well his previous previous postings in the national capital as well yeah, there, there were a lot were of concerns several concerns that was in fact raised uh, well this is what it's but why hate but why hate, uh, hate that crime? is because this is what it is the co the, uh, the Borivali G RP on Monday told the magistrate's court that based on at least 15 videos shot by passengers, they added that the charge of 153A of the IPC, apart from recording statements of witnesses, mainly passengers from so B1, he basically shot he basically shot down those uh, members of the Muslim community and said uh, that uh, you know uh, you will have to take uh, you'll have to chant slogans in the names of in the name of uh, Prime Minister Modi and. Uh, the UP Chief Minister Yogi Adityanath. Uh, he also said, "Yahan par rehna hai to Yogi Modi karna hoga." Um, you know, stuff like that. Um, I was taking a look at uh, one of those, uh, you know, artists uh, putting out uh, those paintings, saying that you know how uh, this entire hate, you know, the the idea of hatred against uh, you know each other's communities is something that is so entrenched in today's youth's uh, brains and minds as well. Yeah, and uh, you know that charge is this: the charge under Section 153A of the Indian Penal Code concerns promoting enmity between different groups on religious grounds. So that charge uh, they have put after seeing and also one of the things also I've come to know is that uh, after reading is that uh, one of the you know team that is pro uh, probing this case what they are mm. saying is that mm. they suspect that the videos which went viral hours after the incident were edited. So now they're trying to get the full videos if possible uh, from them and 15 videos they are already examining that has been done. That is why they've gone ahead with uh, uh, 153A as a charge in that case. All right. Um, just to you know, wrap up this uh, today's page one show. Aam Aadmi Party and Congress. Do you think that the right kind of combo that you need in Gujarat? Of course, you have the most uphill of the battles possible in Gujarat. You are, you you know, you're pegged against <laughs> Narendra Modi's state. Home you're state. pegged against home state. Pegged against the Home Minister's home state. Um, these are stalwarts in uh, you, you know, know the state of Gujarat two things and are the Bharatiya Janata Party. Yes. Track record in Gujarat has been splendid. Yeah, for the so, last uh, 26. Amadi Party years. has been trying its luck. 
be it the municipal polls, be it, uh, you know, the but assembly polls. But they have polls. been building. See, last time uh, when the elections happened, or the assembly elections happened, you see considerable erosion of votes from the Congress to the Aam Aadmi Party. You hmm. do see that hmm. happening. But for me, the strangest part is that Aam Aadmi Party... But are they together the, the, the right kind of front to tackle... See, that is what I, that, that, that's what I was uh, actually uh, wondering about. Two things could happen. One is it could stop the erosion of Congress votes if they come together. Hmm. That is one aspect. I think that is what the Congress insiders would have in fact seen or learned from trying to analyze the numbers from the previous Gujarat Assembly elections. So I think that is something that they are trying to do. That is to stop the erosion of their votes and probably that would give them a fighting chance. Right. But uh, for me, the interesting part is this, that AAP, a party that has, uh, you know, been at the forefront of opposing the Congress, in fact, built an entire missionary to oppose the Congress's corruption in Delhi. And of course, we know that campaign which resulted in them coming to power in Delhi as well. Uh, that was uh, totally against the Congress. And today, they are ready to shake hands with the Congress. And even in the Congress, they are ready to shake hands with AAP because AAP won Punjab, which was under you. Uh, the Congress uh, couldn't, in fact, uh, hold on to that state. So they have been rivals, bitter rivals. And today, when the bitter rivals are shaking hands, Times change. I mean, politics People change. makes strange bedfellows. You remember that? What? The, that statement, politics, in fact, makes strange bedfellows. Uh, hmm. So I think this is an example of that. Well, absolutely. Um, it seems like that's all the time we have for you in this edition of today's page one. As we wrap up, I'm getting uh, some, uh, you know, uh, live news that's coming. A WHO medical product alert. One batch of Indian-made combination syrup found contaminated in Iraq. And I, I mean, if my memory serves right, uh, this is not the first time that it's something not like the this first has happened. Several the times product was found to have unacceptable amounts of diethylene glycol and ethylene glycol, both of which can cause severe problems to humans and can even be uh, fatal. So, one batch of cold out, the medicine's name is called cold out, it's a paracetamol and chlorophenaramine. I'm sorry if I'm taking the pronunciations wrong, uh, chemistry always gets the better of me. Combination syrups uh, used to treat symptoms of the common cold and allergy, uh, one batch of that has been found contaminated. Well, uh, it seems like that's all the time we have for you. Uh, we tried to cover as much as we could. Many thanks for joining us in the comment section and helping us uh, break these newsroom barriers and you becoming a part of our editorial meet. Vargis, always a pleasure to be speaking to you. This is Kabir Nakhvi signing off. Keep watching your channel. GPT. It can generate codes and human-like responses through text, write stories, and do a lot more. I work in a newsroom with.